Our first guest tonight says the president's legal team has been in need of a shakeup for some time and a profound change of both attitude and strategy. Joining us now, Chris Farrell, Director of Investigations and Research for Judicial Watch. Chris, good to have you here. Hey, this, uh, let's start with the subpoena, which I personally find outrageous uh, because Ty Cobb throughout has been accused by many of simply being too passive, uh, too responsive, and not protective enough of the president's uh, executive privilege uh, and uh, the jeopardy that uh, he faces in this special counsel. It's a very grave challenge here. Look, Mueller is doing everything he can in a political, quasi-legal way to destroy any possibility of Trump 2020. Uh, they know he's in office now. They know he's got a little over two years left. And they will do everything they possibly can to make sure it's a one-term presidency. That's the objective. And sadly, I think that Mr. Cobb, I, I don't know him personally. I don't claim to have any special inside mm -hmm. knowledge. But I do have an impression, an informed opinion, that essentially Cobb was uh, sort of slow motion negotiating an indictment of the president. And I think the president was not well served. I think the current moves to have a very aggressive posture to push back on Mr. Mueller uh, is the only way to go because trying to play nice is a losing hand. Well, this has been a two year investigation, almost a year with the FBI investigating so called collusion. Uh, with the special counsel for now almost a year. We're coming with right up zero. on a year. With uh, zero to with, show. So that's two years of investigation without an iota of evidence, without a crime being articulated on the part of the special counsel when it was formed. And the reality is, as we stand here right now, this president should not have to deal with a supra authority that is a cancer on this constitutional republic. Who in the hell said the Congress has the power to create something called a special counsel that subsumes the prerogatives and powers and authorities of the presidency uh, and, and that he has to sit here and just take it? It is ridiculous. And I'm not talking about firing Mueller. I'm not talking about any of that uh, response. I'm saying get into court and, co and challenge the constitutionality of this and do it now and do it every damn day until you find a judge and a court that is responsive to the interest of the nation. Two things. One, legally, everything under the sun has to be challenged. Mueller needs to be told uh, figuratively and literally drop dead uh, in court, but also in, in Rudy Giuliani's own inimitable style. Uh, but in addition to that, there's got to be a, a campaign waged where the disparity of treatment with the whole Obama, Holder, Lynch, Clinton a criminal enterprise that was conducted for eight years, uh, where that is exposed and where the disparity of treatment is shown, because that's what's most offensive. The average viewer sitting out there looks at how Hillary Clinton waltzed away, and we could go into Uranium One and the email server and a litany of real criminality with zero done, zero. Yeah. And in this case, uh, the president and his associates being gone after, you know, with no proof, zero yeah. production. I, Chris, I, I think that's a separate track. I really do. I think well, that the, 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 the responsibility of the president to clean up the Justice Department and the FBI is straightforward. It has to be done. It needs to be done urgently and thoroughly and highly energetically. Uh, but on the other side is protecting this president from this nonsense uh, in which they have a, 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 a cadre of left wing acolytes working for Mueller, who, by the way, uh, as uh, you well know, has a record that goes back to September 11th and beyond uh, an extraordinarily checkered performance. Uh, and uh, many of his associates in the special counsel office have been overturned because of their prosecutorial misbehavior and conduct. And, and I see no reason for the American people to put up with this. No, I mean, Ro Rosenstein at, at Justice Weissman on Mueller's staff, they're held up as these paragons, these virtuous uh, justice seekers. What a load of garbage. Yeah. Uh, if, if people dig into the background and look at the misconduct, look at Rosenstein up in Baltimore and the office he ran there, uh, they will be shocked. Uh, and frankly, I don't know how Rosenstein is still walking around the Justice well, Department. Well, Rosenstein uh, saying to the Congress of the United States was which has oversight responsibility 
uh, over the FBI and the Justice Department saying he won't be extorted? Are you yeah. kidding me? It's a, Who it's the a, hell does he think he is? It's a cowardly overreaction because he knows he's on thin ice. And so he, he blusters and pretends to be offended by what's really routine, normal oversight. I could care less if this man is offended in any way, at any time, in any manner. What I do, do resent, I have to say, is a Congress that has been cowardly and passive in its responsibilities of oversight. After you say Devin Nunes, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, in the House of Representatives, it's very hard to find by anyone leading a committee or in any leadership role who's shown any, any sense of responsibility for the acts that we're all witnessing now uh, and the forces that are arrayed against this president. And, and to put the cherry on top, there's Attorney General Sessions. What is going on oh. with Mr. Sessions? I can't explain it. I do not understand it. Well, and in that, you're a member of a very large club. <laughs> uh, Chris Farrell, as always, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lou.